Hello YouTube. I was doing some mining and I heard all these zombie noises, so obviously there is a zombie dungeon somewhere very nearby and that's something new and exciting and I was digging out a coal There's still some left here sticking out a coal deposit I found that that uh, green block here the semi green block this is mossy cobblestone and wherever you see mossy cobblestone that is where your dungeon is so let's dig around our dungeon here give you guys some light so obviously this is the bottom here and it is just a big square room and there's going to be a spawner in it and there's there's our, our dungeon that thing over there that is a zombie spawner okay and that will continually spawn zombies as long as you're fairly close to it so you want to light up the room okay and that will prevent the zombies from spawning and I'm also going to explore a little bit nearby because sometimes just like this there are some more zombies nearby and if you look at this right here this is uranium we're gonna want that for when we do our nuclear reactor stuff okay and the nice thing uh, one of the nice things about dungeons is that there's chests and they have some useful stuff in it I've got some bread here which is good because I was getting pretty close to starving so I'm gonna eat that now. Okay, we've got gunpowder, useful later for TNT, and the saddles, which I will show you what those are for sometime later, but we will grab that. Plenty of cobble for now, so we'll get rid of that. More iron, string, which is useful for making beds. We'll get rid of the rotten flesh. More gunpowder, wheat, which is used for making bread. Um, get rid of yet some more cobblestone and another saddle. Saddles don't stack. Don't really care about having more than one. However, I do like to keep these chests. I have plenty of wood, but you know it's useful to have. Oh, there we go. So we'll grab this chest too. You can break a chest while it has contents. It just makes the contents spill out. So, later on, we will do something with this zombie spawner. Um, we, what we'll do is we'll set up this room as a trap so that whenever you're nearby, the zombies will spawn, they'll fall into water, which will push them into a lava trap, killing the zombie, causing it to drop its loot, um, or, since rotten flesh isn't all that useful really, uh, what I'll even more likely what I'll do is set up some kind of trap that will cause the zombies to swim upwards through water okay and after they get a certain height the water will push them over and drop them back down just enough height to nearly kill them which will allow me to stand in a position where they can't attack me but I can attack them because I'll basically be attacking their feet and I will just punch them, okay, and they'll have only enough life left that one hit will kill them, so I'll be able to kill all kinds of them all at one time, get lots of experience, and then we can use that experience for enchanting. So, that is why finding a dungeon spawner is excellent. We really want, oh, there was another one, it's still not bright enough over here. Let's light this up a little more here and here and here okay so what you really want to find though is a skeleton spawner because as you saw earlier on with my rubber tree farm the bone meal is extremely useful for growing trees very quickly it can also be used to grow wheat quickly and skeletons drop those bones which will give, give us bone meal and we definitely want some of that so um, I am going to I think I have far more than enough resources. I am going to go ahead and collect this. 
I'll do a little bit more mining and then I will head back to my base and or what I guess you could call it kind of a base and I will macerate a bunch of this copper and tin and iron and then we will I can finally show you that induction furnace and through the magic of YouTube and video editing you will see me again in about well no time at all alright so now I want to I got a pretty good number of resources and I used those two chests that we found in the dungeon to make a second storage chest because that one was full so this one is just kind of miscellaneous stuff along with some industrial craft stuff at the bottom and this one is harvested resources uh, or I guess you could just call it resources used in crafting so kind of organized this a bit and I've macerated and smelted some copper and some other stuff here and now I can finally show you that induction furnace so we're gonna need our wrench so that we can get our furnace okay and place our furnace I believe goes here and the advanced machine goes here with copper all along the sides here and that gives you an induction furnace okay place your induction furnace and open it up and you'll see that it's a little bit different it's getting power from our generator and you can see it's taking a lot longer to get power than the other machines and in addition it has two places up here and heat is zero percent so the way the induction furnace works, and let me get some dust, okay, that we can, that I can show you, and we'll place that in there. Oh, sorry. So we'll place our dust in here, and it should, as you can see, the heat is now going up as the induction furnace smelts the amount of heat that the induction furnace has will go up and when that number reaches 100 percent well actually the higher the number is the faster the induction furnace works okay and I'm honestly not sure why it's taking so much energy it is an advanced machine though I thought it I didn't think it used more than 10 energy so, that basically means that now is the perfect time to show you guys the next thing that we're going to build. And for that, we're going to need 12 tin, we're going to need some redstone, and we're going to need some copper. Okay, so, first we're going to need, I'm sorry, I'm doing this wrong. First we're going to need batter, rechargeable batteries, okay? And this is the recipe for rechargeable batteries. We do need three of those. Okay. And those are going to go like so. We're going to put wood along the bottom and the two top corners and another copper cable here. And that gives us a bat box. Okay. And I'll show you what the bat box is for. We're going to dig this out. Okay. And we're going to change the way energy is being distributed from our generator. We're going to get rid of this copper cable down here and we're going to place it again. And you don't need a special tool for removing the copper cable. It, you can just do it by hand. So what I want to do is this is our generator here. Okay. So I'm going to replace the copper cable that was there okay and I am going to place our let's see what's the best way to do this I need to be able to see better I'm gonna place our bat box right here okay and 
the bat box you can use your wrench to change its facing direction you see it has a little dot there that dot represents the output okay so we want our dot to face up and you can see that the copper cable just went in and you heard the generator turn on when I changed the direction and that is because the bat box holds energy for you okay and it outputs 32 energy units per tick so now we want the output of our bat box to go into our machines so let me fill this in okay and we can fill that in so now it's just gonna keep burning that energy up and putting it into the bat box and another thing about the induction furnace that I forgot to mention here and this is actually very cool uh, what you can do is since it only heats up when it's cooking things there is one way to keep it at a higher heat level however it does cost you energy units per tick and I'll show you how to do that basically you just create a lever which is made like so okay or any anything that provides a redstone signal will work but I like to use a lever okay put your lever in a place where it can power the induction furnace okay so any adjacent tile to a lever will power will be powered by the lever and um, I'll show you how that works before we proceed here uh, redstone is a little bit too complicated to do in one video but I can give you the basics fairly easily um, Redstone is just basically an on-off signal, and as you can see, this redstone dust, it connected to that lever because the lever is a source of, of signal. So if I turn the lever on, we have power. If I turn the lever off, we don't have power. Okay, and you can see that it will work this way as well. See? Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to put our lever right here okay and then we're gonna flip that lever and if you watch the heat is going up now however that costs you one energy unit per tick to maintain now when you have a constant supply of energy it's really not that big a deal that's one solar panel dedicated to your induction furnace being at full heat all the time on the other hand I am using a generator right now so I'm not going to get um, permanent energy from that so I'm not quite ready to set up solar panels yet but I do want to get a little bit more energy kinda of tired of having to go out to chop down trees for and then put the trees in the furnace to get charcoal and then put the charcoal in the generator to get energy it's kind of a big hassle so the next thing I want to show you is going to be something that can give us more energy than the generator and a little bit less troublesome so the first thing we're going to need is some more tin we need two I believe they're called empty cells, and to make that you need four tin. Okay, but the four tin doesn't make two, it makes sixteen. These these empty storage cells there. Let me see if I can find them. Let's see. Here you go, empty cell. Four tin makes sixteen of them. They're supposed to be kind of a disposable kind of thing. As you can see, this is already at 22% heat, going significantly faster than even the electric furnace was going. So induction furnaces are great. As soon as that gets to 100%, I can show you that. Oh, and that reminds me. Uh, I did make a bucket, which is made with that recipe right there, either iron or tin. 
okay, and I went ahead and put some lava in it, and I'll show you why in a moment, but uh, we're also going to need four glass for this, so let's just heat this up in the glass, okay, and let's see what else we need, I am going to be making a geothermal generator, and it looks like we're going to need a generator for that, Two refined iron, and we've got the rest, so let's see, I have no refined iron on me, let's go over here, looks like I do have one refined iron and some iron dust, so let's heat up one iron dust, and turn that into refined iron, and now we have our two, and we also needed the generator, and the generator needs that furnace, a machine block, and a rechargeable battery. So for that, we are going to need more refined iron. So let's cook up more of this. Okay. And we will make that machine block. Okay, so a machine block, as you've seen before, is made like so, and let's see, ah, that's right, okay, a rechargeable battery is made with tin, which we are already macerating, so that's good. Also going to need this copper cable and two redstone. So let's make our battery. Okay, and then we'll just grab this since now that we have that induction furnace, I don't think we'll be needing that anymore. So here's our generator, okay, and here is our two refined iron, and two empty cells, some glass, and here we have a geothermal generator. So we're going to want our geothermal generator to be connected to our copper cable. I'm just going to put it right there, all right, because that copper cable is, well, actually, the copper cable that we want is not from there so what we're going to have to do is run another cable so let's run this cable right over here okay we're going to need more copper cable let's see i know i have lots of rubber here we go Okay, we're going to run this, let's see, I don't want it to connect to my machines, so we're going to run it just like this. Okay, keeping in mind that we do get energy loss after the, on the fifth cable, so that's one there, two, three, four, five, and this would have energy loss. So for the time being, it looks a little bit horrible, but it is gonna be temporary. We will just put our geothermal generator right here, okay? And the way the geothermal generator works is a lot similar to the normal generator, except it takes lava, okay? So you just put the lava down here at the bottom, and you see it got used up immediately. In lava, the geothermal generator generates 20 energy units per tick, and one bucket of lava will give you 20,000 energy, whereas one coal would give you 4,000 energy. So, as you can see, 
our bat box is powering up and there is a source of lava very close to the bottom of that ladder so it should not be too difficult keeping that full now you might think well buckets don't stack so what am I gonna do well let me show you what I'm gonna do we'll go ahead and go and get more lava for our geothermal generator because one bucket is obviously not going to be enough to cover us permanently and there's lava just around this corner so you just right click with your bucket like so and then put your bucket right here and your empty cells right there and you get a lava cell okay so doing this you can You can get lots of the the geothermal generator will take those cells as well so let me show you how that works and the lava cells stack and they're considered to be the same amount of lava as a bucket can hold so that's 20,000 energy from each lava cell so those three lava cells that I just created plus the bucket that I already put into the generator that is going to be 80,000 and charcoal is 4,000 each so this should last us a significantly longer amount of time. All you do is you put your lava cells in here and you see it ate up all three of them instantly because I believe it can hold, it can process 12 at a time. So our bat box is going to be more than full we are in real good shape with energy and you can see our furnace is at 100% heat so let me show you how fast it is. So as you can see the induction furnace is a very nice machine to have. So let's grab that and we'll turn some of that into, into refined iron as well because we'll be making plenty more industrial craft stuff. All right, so that's the end of the episode. I showed you the geothermal generator. We went over energy loss with copper cable and, oh, not sure what's going on here. Oh, our bat box is full. That's what's happening. And it's using one energy at a time to keep our induction furnace going. So that is what's happening. Anyway, induction furnace, geothermal generator, buckets, we saw that dungeon, very cool, the zombie dungeon, and we organized, very nice. So if you like this episode, please click like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.